I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta. Today on the show, I am joined by my season three sister and a pillar of the Atlanta drag community. The one and only Phoenix is here, not Phoenix ATL. Her name is Phoenix. We chat about regional drag, being a showgirl, being a show producer, tipping like this. But first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom. Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who will turn around and go home if there's no parking, and she'll be cool. Real cool, I promise. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Where is everyone's manners? I'm so worried about manners. It really, really matters. Manners matter. And I see it reflected every day in so many different ways. You know, people always uh, will say like, anybody who complains about something is a Karen. Oh my gosh, you're such a Karen. And I don't think that's true. I think we all have those tendencies. But this may be Karen-y of me, whatever. Uh, you know, we talk about the tipping culture being uh, out of control, and I, I have lived my life in a an art form that requires tipping or suggests tipping or uh, expects tipping, whatever. I've always lived by this theory that people that come to a drag show are not required to tip, but it is something that we do. It's part of the culture. We encourage it. So, you know, you have little ways of of saying to people, you know, the way that you want them to do it. And There's always been that thing of the people like holding out a dollar and then pulling it back because they're like, ah, come get it. Like what you're doing on stage is not enough. So I need to see you like really, really earn this dollar. Like I'm not going to. And I just I don't partake in that. I I need the dollar. And, you know, I need that dollar. And, you know, damn well, I'm going to reach out for you if you hold that dollar in front of me. But when you start doing this back and forth. I can't, I just, I can't do it. I really, I cannot. I remember one time um, it was happening and I just, I was at a breaking point. I was in Palm Springs. I was in a place where like people respected me, I thought. And there was somebody that was doing that. And I just, I lost my mind and I just got on my hands and knees and started barking. I was like, is this, this is what you want. This is what you see this as. This is what you find funny. And I, I almost hold the space for... Somebody who's never, I can tell, because you can tell, somebody who's never been to a drag show before and they have no idea what's happening and they think like it's being silly. And it's usually a straight person who's a little uncomfortable and they're trying to like ingratiate or they're trying to like wrap themselves around what's happening because they don't know. And so and you have to differentiate. I'm at a brunch. It's a lot of straight people. You're just providing the color for them. It's their party. We've gone over this before. All they're going to remember is what was sparkly, uh, what smelled good, uh, who was funny, what they got to sing along to, and who had big tits and a big ass. Like, that's what they remember because they want to take that picture on their phone and go, you're not going to believe what I saw this weekend. Look, at, can you even believe it? So usually they'll be engaging. It'll be fun, right? Um And so you have to have that mindset. You're not going to go into a show, a brunch show, and think, oh, I'm going to do this retelling of this, that, or the other, because they don't want to think. But the thing that I've been experiencing lately, and and it's not everywhere, but it's been happening pretty frequently and not just to me because I have this conversation with a lot of people. And if it's not happening to you and you're a drag entertainer somewhere else, thank God it's not happening to you because I really hope it's not. I hope it's isolated to a region or um, a group. I'm hoping it's isolated because I feel like then we can figure it out, right? 
It's when you just, as an MC, you go out and you're like, hey, welcome to the show. And you go out to start your number. That's what I like to do. I like to announce the show. I start a number. I go out because I want to be the first person to take the hit for the uh, other entertainers in the show. So I figure if I go out and I don't really get tipped, well, whatever, because, you know, this is people still settling down, getting their drinks, you know, moving through, whatever. It's fine. Um, but this idea of like not clapping, just not clapping, not making a noise, not being surprised, not being affected in any way. It's happening more often than not. And of course, I have to sit back and say, OK, what's the immediate factor? It's happening to you. Um, what is it that you're bringing to the table and why do you think that um, maybe it could be your fault? Like, are they just not gagged? Are you not gag worthy? Are you boring? Are you ugly? Are you not putting enough effort forward? Usually for me, I feel like the opening number should be sort of this welcoming number idea. It doesn't have to be the most, um, um, uh, you know, something you have to put a lot of thought into. It could just be a hello, I'm here sort of number, right? Um, and I have a ton of those. I have a ton of those. But it's so unnerving when no one claps and you come out and you think, all right, I'm taking that hit. And then you go around, and you're sort of entertaining to an area and emoting to this group and this group. And people are like on their phone or they like look up and they look the other way. Or they're like, ah, and then we're going to go do this. And then we're going to go fucking party afterwards. And we're going to fucking hit some coke. And then we're going to booty bump. And bitch, I don't give a fuck. And they're talking and you're like, all right, maybe they're still, they've never done this before. Maybe they've never left their home. Maybe they've never seen a piece of live theater. Maybe the only time they ever got to go to the movies was with like, uh, I don't know, like a gift card. I don't know. There's a reason. There's a reason for this. But so, you know, I'll go through. Then I'll get on that mic. Hey, what's going on? How y'all feeling? And there's just kind of this like malaise, this like, okay, what's going on? And I'm thinking in a space where it's live theater, it is your job to clap, to, I mean, if you're at a seminar, if you're at a seminar that you don't even want to be at and someone's up and they're like, yeah, and we've got this next new generation, this, this, and this, and the next person coming up is going to talk about it. Please make welcome Laura Appleby. And people will just, oh, Laura Appleby. Well, that's good. Uh, Maybe they're only there because they're going to be getting a, uh, a gift card afterwards. Like whoever attends and listens to the whole ceremony or the whole, the whole session, you're going to get something, right? So you're going to clap. I don't understand why you wouldn't take that same effort to a place that you paid to be. I, I don't understand. Like, and especially knowing that drag has been under such an attack. It's really fucking weird to me. Like I have, I hold more space for straight people, for cis people to behave that way than I do for queer people because I feel like queer people have the responsibility to like be in the front, right? To be arm in arm in front, marching in front, saying this is a respected art form in our community. And when I go sit and I take in this type of art form, and my favorite entertainer is not out right now, but will be coming out. Um, I'm going to applaud for everyone because, yes, I have my favorite, but they all need to be respected. And it's part of my job as a member of this community to show other members of a community, this is how we behave here. This is how we respect. This is how we show love. This is how we give people a little bit of dignity. It affects me personally because I'm invested. I love what I do. I like making people happy. I like being a local queen. Sure, I love having a, a national, if not international platform with this. If I had my way, I would podcast all day long. I love it. I love talking. I love talking to people. I love interviewing people. Anytime something comes up, I'm like, I want to do it. Put me in. Let me be somebody's sidekick. Let me be the host. Let me in some way, let me write. It's just like... What a weird time to be alive in your life. It's like, I, Dolly, what does Dolly Parton say? Design, refine, and shine. And I always thought in my 20s, I was designing what it is that I wanted. And then in my 30s, I would sort of whittle away those things that worked and didn't work because we're refining it. And then in your 40s, you shine, right? But what do you do? Like, what do you do after that? What's next? And you know what? Listen, Jasmine Masters said it best a long time ago. RuPaul's Drag Race fucked up drag. But 
also put drag on a really great platform and gave people opportunity. It's not really drag race that did it. It's people who go, well, I watch drag race on TV, so I support drag. No, you don't support drag. Your favorite drag race contestants you're supporting when you watch the show. But when you're out and about and you're at a show seeing how this art form really moves and you aren't even clapping, it's fucking free to clap. It is free. And to not do that just out of bare bones, basic respect. I'm not saying you have to gag and jump up and down and scream and drop your whole paycheck off to every single drag entertainer. I'm not saying that. I am saying if you go, you are fucking obligated to clap when somebody's name is announced. A normal applause would be, oh, that's great. Yeah. Oh, oh I'm so excited. That's cool. Like nobody's asking you to fucking jack off. And fucking go off and be like, oh, fuck, this is going to change my life. Like, I'm not expecting that. And there is something so magical about a crowd that is there to see whatever it is that is being offered up. Again, you know, I go to a uh, fat slut. I go to a show like um, like Exposure, you know, these, these communities where you mix together um so many different types of entertainment. So I pine for these times when like, when it does happen and like two or three people clap, I feel like, wow, I fucking succeeded. But that's really weird because back in the day when two or three people would clap, you would be like, wow, this kind of sucks. Like they're not that into it. Mm, how do we get the crowd? Again, I would take full ownership of it if I thought it's just me feeling this way. But when there are groups of people or everyone in the show is talking about this feeling, it's really, really strange. You have to do it like this. <gasps> whoa! 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 Mm, mm, give me COVID. Give me COVID for one dot for two dollars. Please, I'm so hungry. Oh, please. Let me lick your money. Let me put my money in a blender and drink it because it's so different. Such a surprise to do that. Please. The, was this in a stripper's asshole? Oh, my God. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure to shove it all the way in my throat. What, what else should I do for that $2? What do you do when people try to give you $2? How do you beg for it? <laughs> How about this? How about, hey, I like what you're doing. Here you go. Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Like, why more? I think where a lot of this comes from is the fact that people do not think that drag is an art form. They do, in fact, think the drag entertainers are here as a backdrop color for our party. And whatever they do should involve us laughing at them, not laughing with them. And I don't like people fucking laughing at me. I like people laughing with me. Do you want to see me take a break? Because I want to see me take a break. We all know how much I love fast food, but do you know what I love even more? Factor. Factor's ready-to-eat meals make healthy eating easy, and it's delivered directly to your door. Every meal is fresh, never frozen, and ready to go in just two minutes. Factor's meals are chef-crafted and offer over 35 choices to choose from. Whether you're looking for something calorie-smart or keto-friendly, Factor has the quick and delicious meals you're looking for. This past week, I ordered the filet mignon and mushroom risotto with garlic butter green beans and red peppers. And let me tell you, baby, it was everything. Other than the delicious taste of the food, I love that there's no prepping, cooking, or really cleanup needed. Head over to factormeals.com slash verydelta50 and use code verydelta50 to get 50% off. That's code verydelta50 at factormeals.com slash verydelta50 to get 50% off. Honey, let's do it. <laughs> my guest today is a drag professional, a producer, a showgirl, and my sister from RuPaul's Drag Race Season 3, Phoenix. Hi, Delta. Hi. I'm so glad you're here. I am so excited to be here. I really am. Yeah. I, I love uh, Very Delta. It's fucking hilarious. It, it's one of these that, like, some things you say, I didn't think that they bothered me, and then when you brought them up, I'm like... 
wait a minute, that actually pisses me <laughs> I off love also. That. I love so that. Good. Well, I need that. I need people to agree with me because really, <laughs> um, you know, these uh, these musings, baby, they're not, there's bigger problems in the world. Right. We know it. We know it. It's, it's still fucking hilarious, but though. <laughs> there's shit that just gets on our nerves. You it know does. what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Um, the second you walked in, I could smell you. Ah. You, I love when someone has like their signature mm-hmm. fragrance. I've never smelled this fragrance before, but it is your signature, and it, it is Christian Dior Addict. Ain't it good? I I love it. It's I love layered, it. Layered. It's rich. Thank you. They're, it has this like almost like a little bit of a masculine tone to oh, it. Oh, there's a gender play you know I mean? going yes, on. Yes, I I love it. I, it. It's my favorite. I've worn mm-hmm. it for years, so I love it. Yeah, I when I smell it, I think okay. I've never smelled something right. like that together. So now I feel like if I ever smell it again, you're gonna be like, that's Phoenix. Yeah, exactly. Because there's certain people, right? And I, I knew I was like coming into this, Delta is a big fragrance whore. So I was like, I've got to make sure I smell right. So. Oh, it smells so good. Thank you. How Thank long you. have you worn that? Oh my God. Years. Yeah, like, it's yeah, something you've just very, very fell in love time. with. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Every now and then I'll kind of go and do something else. But for the most part, this uh-huh. is my like signature scent. So yeah. I remember, um, I, I don't know if, if this is in your whole life that mm-hmm. you're this organized of a person, uh-huh. but I remember you brought me out to Atlanta to work uh-huh. and you were going through some jewelry and bitch, anybody <laughs> out there, this bitch had jewelry for every color of the rainbow, but you had it so organized. Do you organize do. everything that way? No. If you could see my drag room right okay. now, it's a disaster. But the 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 jewelry, had, I put them all in these like um, plastic kind of briefcase looking things yeah. and they have like little pockets and yeah but uh yeah i mean you pay enough for it you don't want hello it. right hello right. yes but no my, my drag room right now is a complete disaster it's one of those like you because i work a lot so i come yeah. in i have a bag and and sometimes i put everything away and then most of the time it just kind of goes in a bin and repack and mm-hmm. yeah, so it's right now a disaster so yeah. someone come clean it <laughs> do you ever think when you're leaving for a show like do you like to get ready at home or get ready at the gig so normally especially if i'm at my home bar future i have like a little dressing area uh-huh. that, uh, that's kind of mine so i get ready there but um some of my other shows i do get ready at home yeah it's kind of like my moment to kind of be in my head be in uh-huh. my thoughts and just kind of escape for a minute it's kind yeah. of a little therapeutic so yeah i feel like i love getting ready at the gig but i f- i'm that person who if i'm Gonna get ready at home. I always think, um, I'm not gonna take my full suitcase. I'm just gonna take what I need. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I always forget something. Girl, I know, every time. Always, right? Now, Phoenix, I've always known you as Phoenix. Uh But like Raja, people know Raja as Raja. Right. But then there came a point where people were like, oh, Raja Gemini, Phoenix ATL. It's so funny. (laughs) Tell me. So it is so funny when I go somewhere and, and they'll call me Phoenix ATL and I'm like, do you really think ATL is my last name? Like, really? It, but it, it, I guess it was um, social media. You had to put Facebook. a last, yeah, yeah, you had to put a last name. And um, so I put it in there. But the stupidity that I feel when people are like, Phoenix ATL, I'm like, you really thought that was my right, last name? Right, right. Like, <laughs> it's so embarrassing, girl. It is weird. It's <laughs> so weird. weird. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of people, when they see people on Drag Race and then they're like, oh, that person's moving to LA. Right. Or that person is, uh, must be their first time in LA. But, you know, I knew you prior to that, yep. obviously, right. because you were in LA. I was, yeah. Yeah. I lived here off and on for like three, three years, something like that. I went home a lot. Um, and then, uh, you know, my my sister, she got pregnant with my first nephew, and I just I kind of missed home. I missed being near my family, so I moved back home. And uh, you know, I, I love Atlanta. I yeah. love to uh, you know, every time I start to think about leaving, I'm like, why? It's 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 right. great. It's home for me. So I like to be able to visit LA, and then go back home. So why do why do you think outsiders from that are not from Atlanta always say hot Atlanta? It's like, I don't I, know. That's what I was like, so, like, that's not what people in Atlanta say. So, and it's funny because we were talking about the other night. If you're from Atlanta, I don't even think there's a T in Atlanta. Right. It's like Atlanta. 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 Yeah. yeah so Californians do that Sacramento. Sacramento. I think, yeah. I, well, it depends. Southern California and Northern California, like different sort of dialect right. in a way. Yeah, yeah. When people say Atlanta, I'm like, no, it's Atlanta. Right. <laughs> I don't know what it is about, uh, about the, about the South. And specifically the Atlanta girls. Right. But like I've always felt like uh, that was where I like had my immediate connection on Drag Race or all the girls. I always feel like I guess 
because I always wanted to be a Southern Belle. Right. You know uh-huh. what I mean? I do. Mm-hmm. And I, so I'm like, the closest I can get is a Southern California Belle. Right. <laughs> but all the girls from Atlanta are always like, so, I feel like it's always so extra accommodating to Aww. me. And I always make me feel like, um, like I'm a Southern Belle in I a love way. That. Like I feel so Good. like, uh, what is it called when you give somebody an honorary? Yeah. I felt I like that. that. You, Sonique, Nicole, like all the girls, Mariah. All the girls, I always feel so like welcomed. Oh, I love that and it though. Doesn't, and the other girls too, but something about the what right. is it about Atlanta? I don't know. I don't know. It's that that southern hospitality. It is. You know, for me, like, you know, I, I book a lot of girls from all over the place. And mine is also as someone who travels, when I bring someone in, I like to make sure that they are fully taken care of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's that I, I want them to be comfortable in my home, in my bar. I, you know, I, I like that that feeling of of mm-hmm. being comfortable because um, I know what it's like to go somewhere and really have no clue what is going on. Right. You know what it's like to to get to a gig and just be like lost. So I like when I bring girls in that they just are comfortable and happy mm-hmm. when they leave. So, well, I remember um, the when I was out there, Rayo happened to be out there at uh-huh. the same time. Uh huh. And you were like, "What do you want to eat?" And I was like, "I really want like a southern meal." And you were like enough said gotcha girl and you fucking got on. you <laughs> ordered this food and i had never had something so damn good oh i it love was that so so right well i just love i mean i love everything about the idea of right. southern comfort food or a sunday dinner and just it's so true like you really are a professional hostess as Thank a job you. but also as friends you like to make people feel absolutely is that your family that way as well yeah i just kind of grew up very with a, a loving environment mm-hmm. so yeah and you have like the best figure ever. Thank you. But you, but you treat yourself. You know what you like. But you also mm-hmm. like this commitment to your your figure. I mean, the legs are to die Thank for. You. Always. These things. Are, can we see? Are your shoes showing up oh, on there? There they are. There they are. Bitch, Get it, honey. You don't play. You don't play. <laughs> what is that? How do you strike that balance between treating yourself, but also looking perfection? Well, I I enjoy the gym. Mm-hmm. You do. Um, I, I I enjoy that. Um, it's kind of a a stress reliever. So you know, I do cardio. Actually, work out. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I do like to indulge. I have a sweet tooth, Mm -hmm. but you know, I also know that, you know, part of my job is to be looking snack. Right. Cause you love fashion. You love, you love wearing, you love all of the like revealing things you love. I mean, this, this course, it also kind of helps the situation. You know what I mean? (laughs) But you know, you're lying. You know how to present. I have an amazing designer and, and he knows my body really Mm -hmm. well. So we make sure that everything is cut to be figure friendly. Right. Um, and, you know, when I'm having that little moment where I'm feeling a little thick, you know, I've got costumes that, that kind of sure. can pull it all in together. Sure. So I love that because I feel like I know that you're like, I know exactly how far up it has to go yes. before it's starting to show too much. So uh-huh. let's bring it right there. Right at the line. But you know, your designer knows like when you fit for something, some people go, uh, yeah, no, you know my measurements. It'll be fine. But everything responds differently. It does. And yep. so you might have to walk in something and you're like, actually, this fabric, when I walk, right. my whole crotch is out. Completely. I and don't want that or I do want that. Correct. <laughs> and I mean, and Chris, he he can make things. We've been working together for so many years. He knows my body and he knows exactly what I like. He knows how far up on the side. He knows all that kind of stuff. Right. So I'm very, very fortunate to have someone that knows my body. Um, so mm-hmm. it, it definitely helps out with it. So when you travel... Mm-hmm. Do you, uh, is there certain things that you take on the plane with you that you, like some people like to take your makeup? makeup. You like to take your makeup. Yeah. I carry my makeup with me. Um, I just, I feel like I could make a, a costume. I could rush. And I, and I know you could go to the store and grab makeup if you, if you needed, but my makeup, I just, it's, I have to have it. So mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's, um, that's my carry on. I feel like a lot of girls, and, and this is no shade on newer seasons, but I feel like a <laughs> lot of girls from older seasons. Uh-huh just have had that experience of losing so much right. stuff or um, getting somewhere and being like, well, this zipper broke. What am I going to do? Right. I was always, you know, sort of brought up in drag to be like, you better have some backup right. black dress or something oh, you can absolutely. throw on. You might have to be on the microphone. You might have to do X, Y, and Z. And that's kind of how we were raised. Yeah. It's like everybody needs to know how to be on the microphone. Right. Some people will do it a little bit better, but, but yes. you better be able to finish a show if somebody gets sick. You know, it is, uh, there was a queen, um, her name was uh, Lily White. Mm-hmm. She used to always say, like, your your looks are going to fall, 
you're you're not going to be able to dance like you once were able to. She was like, but your voice will live forever. She was like, get a mic in your hand. Yeah. I mean, you do it so often. Yeah. What what do you like doing weekly shows, cast shows, private events? Like what what's what I do? I do all of it. You know, I um I am the entertainment director at Future Nightclub. So we have shows there on the weekend. I'm at Blake's on the Park. So, you know, I, I do a lot of like local, but I also, you know, I, I manage other girls as well. So, um, I send myself, other girls, we do corporate private events, we do all kinds of stuff. So I, um, you know, I have a production company, Phoenix Entertainment, and, uh, you know, it's been amazing to do a huge variety of things. It's right. not just about doing shows inside of a nightclub. So, and drag is insane now. So it's, right. it's everywhere. I think that's the magic too, is like with the job that you have, right? you know, you get uh, different events that will come forward. So for instance, pride season's coming right. up mm-hmm. and you want to put people out. You might have girls that say, oh, I want to work the festival. Right. Uh-huh. But you have to think to yourself, are you the right entertainer for the right. festival or are you the right entertainer for in the club? Right. Because that- And there is a difference. There is because you can get a girl lost on a big yep. stage- even though she's sick, me. Right, right, yeah. Right. How does that work? Because I mean, for you? we. So I, I also, I produce the uh, Starlight Cabaret, and it has been like the closing of Atlanta Pride for like over thirty years, and I have about twenty to twenty-five different performers. So we have so much drag in Atlanta. So I have to be very strategic about who I put up there because it is. It's a huge stage with thousands of people in the crowd. So I can't just put anyone up there. Right. It's got to be someone that is an entertainer. Mm-hmm. There's, a, there's a huge difference. You know, not everyone is a performer, is an entertainer. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, especially in today's time where everyone thinks that they can do drag now. So, you know, I've got to be very, very strategic about the the right people. Yeah, I mean, some people do do take it personally, but it's they like you're, mar- you're marketing an entire show right. and it comes back on you. It does. And it's not throwing shade on somebody saying, I don't think you're, it's not that I don't think you're lovely right. or it's not that I don't think that you are valid. It has to work within this period of time. Right. It needs to flow from one to the other because you know, the show, like we right, said, right. ebbs and yep. flows in a way, yep. but people, some people do take it personally. Oh, they definitely do. It's tough. Yeah. They do. You're not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, but if it happens, it happens. All drag is valid girl. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> And we are back with Phoenix talking about all drag being valid. Yeah, you know, here we, we have something we, like that. <laughs> we hold the space for everybody wanting to do drag. We do, course. we do. Right. Um, all drag may be valid, but not all drag is bookable. <laughs> yeah, it's tough it's when you're because you're marketing a brand, right. a name, anything like that. Well, it's it's also like I mean, uh, how long have you been doing this? Oh my gosh, since 97? Yeah, so I'm like 23 years in it. And I think like you know, we come from a time where not everyone did drag. And, right. and, and the art form of what we do, there there is an artistry to it. And, you know, when we came up, you had to do your own makeup, make your own wigs, make your own costumes, perform, MC like it was a full, you know, but now... The, I, I feel like the artistry is kind of suffering. Like, don't don't get me wrong. I love how mainstream and how big drag has right. become. But, you know, now you don't, you can watch a YouTube video to, to learn how to do your makeup. You can order some hair offline. You can order a costume. You know, the, the, the artistry. I wish that some of these kids would kind of study the art. Mm-hmm. And not just kind of throw themselves in drag. Mm-hmm. There, there is a there's a history to what we do, and I, I hope that that kind of stays alive and doesn't get lost in yeah. all the mainstreamness of it. I mean, I feel like one of the first when you say study it, one of the first things I can remember seeing back in the day was I think it was Drag Time, mm-hmm. the the documentary, mm-hmm. and I think that's where I first saw Lily White. Oh yeah, uh-huh. and um, that you look back at something like that, and you really do see how rich yeah. it once was, right. and how uh, how people would sort of defer to and pay respect to right. the people that were around them that were doing it. And this, it was no shade. It's not like you, anyone was saying, come kiss my ass. Right. It was saying, come sit with me. Yep. Come learn with me. Come I, watch. Me. I was so fortunate to, to grow with, you know, Queens like Charlie Brown. Oh my God. Goddess Raven, Shauna Brooks, you know, perfection. like perfection. And I, I remember there was a there was a club called Backstreet, and mm-hmm. Backstreet was a twenty four hour club, seven days a week. But they had a cabaret upstairs, and they did shows, you know, through the, throughout the weekend. They had a a junior cast on Wednesdays. Okay. And so I, I got put on the junior cast, 
and I was so young, so new to all this. So I remember going to tip Shauna and Shauna was like, Charlie wants to see you in the back. Now, nervous yeah. wreck going back there because you walk in and you're in the dressing room with like goddesses, mm -hmm. like masters of the craft. And uh, Charlie was like, I've been hearing good things about you. And uh, she booked me for the, like to be on the weekend show. Wow. And be that was just such a, a moment that I would just, you know, always remember because it was yeah. just it, being in a room with these legendary queens and, and seeing people that were just masters at what they do. I, I yeah. was very, very, very fortunate. So it's just I feel like uh, some of these people that you mentioned mm -hmm. are definitely even though I've never met most of them, right. um, the people that I do know that knew them would always say these are people who take what they do seriously, yep. but not themselves right. seriously. And that's something that people don't get. Everybody wants to be a star. So they're like, oh, a star. The most attainable thing I think I could do is just start doing drag, get on right. Drag Race, and then maybe somebody will sponsor me to put up an ad on Instagram right. and I'm a star. Right, no. But they don't really have a passion for it. And like it drives me crazy when, when I'm like, when I'll ask a younger performer, why did you start doing drag? Because mm -hmm. I want to get on Drag Race. Mm -hmm. But that's the reason you started doing drag. Right. Like that's that's great to have a goal. But sure. like I want you to start drag because you love the art of it. Right. You, you love the transformation part of it. But your whole purpose of starting drag is specifically for drag race. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just that that always just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I've always felt like a drag entertainer. um, is really a, a specifically a career where you have to know a little bit about everything. And you, right. you hit on that earlier right. when you said, we used to do our wig, da, da, da. But like, you have to know a little bit about photography. Absolutely. You have to be able to make an outfit. I'm not saying it has to be perfect, and I'm not saying right. you can't use a glue gun. Right. It just, you need to get it on you somehow. Right. Um, you need to be able to fluff up a wig. Yep. Uh, you need to be able to uh, model through something. Yep. Even down to like knowing that, that's one thing about when I started my production, it, because I, I know lighting. I know that the small things that, that makes drag come, come to life. Right. And, you know, now I can go in somewhere and be like, I need these lights fixed. I need the system to do this because, right. it, you know, it, it takes a lot of tricks to make drag mm -hmm. be as grand and big as it is. And that's why it's so important to, like, really sort of be around these people that have done it for a long right. time. Just so you can hear those words oh, yeah. and go, oh, I didn't know you could ask that. It gives you the confidence does, to say... Right. I didn't know I could speak up for myself. Right. And you can, you should. Absolutely. Because n not everybody knows. I think it's always funny when you hear like a young queen, when you'll hear someone say, what color did you want? And they'll say, um, do green or do blue. And I get that you think it's going to look like, a, you know, Avatar right. or something. Right, right, right. It's not going to come out that way, it's baby. It's not, no. It's not and and when you like put like a, like a yellow filter or something, it just, depending on your skin tone, it can make you look really crazy. So yeah. you have to know all those kind of things. Right. Um, because we all know the right lighting or the wrong lighting can change everything. Yeah. You know, I mean, like drag, no matter how fierce your makeup is, you put drag walking through Kroger. Right. It's look a little crazy girl. Right. You know what right. I mean? So, you know, it definitely is those those little moments and, and things yeah. that really kind of bring it all to life. So yeah. lots of bells and tricks and whistles. So, I mean, I have people all the time that are like, oh, uh. They'll comment. They'll say, "Oh, you, you, you don't age." And I'll message back, like, or I'll comment. And I'll say, "You know, the filters do great things." Uh -huh. And then people will say, "Like, oh my gosh, why do you filter so much?" And I'm thinking, it's for me. I remember right. Matthew saying, "It's the next step in cosmetic application." Right. Like, you, this is how you're going. When you see me in person, you're right. going to go, "Yeah, she looked like that picture." Was it sweetened? Of course it was. Of course. And and, and that is actually like you know I'll filter things, but it's sure. you know when I show up, you're not like. Who the fuck is this? Right. You know, it's it's not, you know, looking like beauty in the photo and right. then the beast in person. I want a little, That's... like, makeup fallout to go away. Yeah, of I want course. the corner of my mouth. Is... But, I mean, I'm not trying to tell people, like, right. ooh, take those arms off of me. And, like, girl, no. Because, babe, when I tell you I have booked girls and they show up and you're like. <laughs> Stop it. Who is that? Like, right, it's right. a completely different person. So, no. I, right. I like to filter and touch up. But, I mean you still know what you're getting in person. So, right. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, it's too, when you see people do like celebrities. Right. And then they like really go in and like yeah. alter. The, and it's like, they, baby, you got to try to do that with makeup. I'm going to be pissed off if you show up and you don't look like your damn photo. Right. <laughs> so right. I'm be pissed off. And I love, I love when, when people like, uh, you know, I, I love doing Adele, but I try to keep it where I'm like, I, 
do the looks that I think right. are the most accurate for me. Right, and of right. course, suspension of disbelief. People are going to go, well, you're a guy. And right. Well, it's going to be a little bit different. I understand. I mean, it's it's not going to be, you know, perfect. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I do Reba as an illusion. And you know which Reba works for I, you. I know what Reba That's works That's where I was going me. with this. And and it's like, you know, I, I mean, there's Chad Michaels is a is a illusion master. You know, he he definitely, when he shows up, he gives you that illusion. You know, I know that I'm not like a dead ringer for, for Reba, you know, but it still gets the job done. Well, you, you know, know what, I mean? what you're going to do right. and what, what the trappings are. Like, you're right. not trying to be like, oh, I'm going to put a 1983 album cover of Reba McIntyre on. Like, that's not going right, to work. Right, 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 right. You, you may know what that is. Right. But other people are going to be like, what is that supposed to be? Well, she's recognizable in the red dress. She's recognizable in this kind of right. hair. These are the colors I'm going to use. Yeah, yeah and, I love and, that. Uh, yeah, and I mean, I'm, I love playing with the illusions. It, it's fun. Yeah. It's, a, it's a whole, you know, I always tell my, my girls, have one illusion under your belt. Yeah. You know, it's, it's we were talking about the corporate stuff earlier. People still, one of the first questions they'll ask is like, who do you do? Right. You know, and, and I used to be so weird with that because I'm like, I do me, I do Phoenix. Yeah. But, but you know, they, they kind of, they, they want the, the divas, the share, you know, uh, Barbara Streisand. They, they want those divas. And it's just like a huge part of our drag culture. So I think all performers should have like at least one illusion under your, under your yeah. belt. So it's fun though. Chad used to say, um, you know, obviously, like, the queer community is a little more refined and critical when it comes to, like, well, who's really Adele or who's really this right. or that? He's like, but baby, from working in Lacage for so many years, for straight people coming into a casino, anybody with a blonde wig and big fake boobs is, is Dolly, Dolly Parton. Parton yes. Anybody <laughs> with a leotard and a black wig and a skinny is Cher. Is Cher, yep. And he's like, and you have to know, you know, we talk about this all the time, like, performing at a brunch. A brunch is usually going to be a lot of people that have never, they're not going to go to a night show. Right, right. So if it's going to be a lot of straight people, give them a sing-along. Give them that, yes. Give them what you, you don't, you're doing to work too hard if you try to tell all these stories. Right, yeah. And do all these other things that queer people on a Tuesday are going to love. And some of these girls now, they are out there killing themselves, mm -hmm. like jumping off things, falling. I'm like doing all this extra and I'm like. Girl, you're doing a lot. <laughs> you're doing a, you're doing a lot for that dollar bill. I'm like, I'm I'm good with right. that. Right, no. and with no insurance. No, girl, <laughs> it's a fool. Like I I appreciate it. I am entertained by it, uh -huh. but I just yeah, I can't be doing all that. It's a lot. My, my body. It's I'm, a lot. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing all that. Those the death drops. I'm like, you're definitely you're you're dropping, girl. Yeah, you're dropping. But since you've been in town, you've been doing shows. I have been. You always seem to find find a way, and you know, I I can remember. Um, before Drag Race, you know, running around was you and and, and Megan oh yeah. and Raven, right. and Morgan, yeah, Mayhem. Mayhem. There was a whole group of people that all eventually, yeah. for the most part, not everybody, but should have been everybody, um, filtering onto Drag Race. Right. You know what I mean? And it's crazy. Like when I when I lived in L.A., drag was not what it is now, right. and there wasn't a lot of drag in West Hollywood. Um, you know, we would go out and drag, and people would literally be like, "Who the hell are these?" Drag queens, you know, right. they, it was so bizarre. And then now it's everywhere. Like yeah. it, it's insane how big drag has become. Cause I mean, I do, I remember going out and we would literally be the only queens out at, uh, what, Here Lounge or the uh -huh. Abbey. Yeah, and, Here Lounge. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it was crazy. And now drag is on every corner. Yeah. You know, I always think there, obviously there's, there's difference in drag regionally. Right. So, uh -huh. so you see a different response. Um, but I feel like, Atlanta mm -hmm. and in Florida were the only two places I uh, had ever performed uh -huh. where I experienced people lining up to tip. Oh, yeah. And I remember seeing it back in the MySpace right. days. I would be like, what are they doing? And they're like, girl, that's how people tip. Yeah. And they and, and they and they love that part of it. Like yeah. they 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 feel like it's this like moment, their moment to be a part of the show. Mm -hmm. They they love that hand off you know now some people will use the the tip apps but for the most part like in atlanta they they love that interaction uh-huh it, it just it's their little kind of moment to shine also some people take it a little too far and want to put it in their mouth and do all this kind of stuff and i'm uh -huh. like girl i'm not doing on this for that dollar <laughs> right right i don't want covid again yeah girl, i'm not good. doing this honey i'm not yeah doing it. but i i can i can always remember seeing like the all the beautiful trans performers uh -huh. that would be like moving and they would get their money and they would like organize their money as they were uh -huh. performing and i always and i i find myself doing that sometimes right. you uh -huh. know with all six dollars um <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but not six dollars. But girl. you know what I mean. Like yeah. you, it was a thing where you would watch you like, damn, they're methodical. Right. They are really doing that, and it's so I, elegant. And it, I was about to say, it's it's a it's there is a way to take the money. You know, right. don't don't just snatch and throw it and do all this. There is a, a way that you can while you're performing to take it and and let it be almost choreographed as part of it. I hate when girls only stand there and they're just taking money. Right. You know, I I, right. I, I like for you to perform mm -hmm. and then you will, you will get your dollars but make sure you're still performing like right the, the tipping is great but when i tell you <laughs> when someone has like twenty dollars and they want to tip you all one oh, one at a time one at a time i'm like i appreciate this but it is taking a whole lot of time out of my soul <laughs> right. well what's weird too is like when a girl like will go out and start grabbing the money and like Dollar, throw it, dollar, throw yeah. it. Or, or they'll like go to shower themselves oh with $4. Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, girl. Just hang on to that, baby. It'll look yeah. prettier if or, you just Or the best on. is when someone like, and now I'm not going to get tip, watch. <laughs> when they, they'll take like $5 and like throw it at you to make it rain. I'm like, girl, that was a sprinkle. Girl, the fuck was, was that? <laughs> that was a little dry <laughs> orgasm. I'm like, what was that, girl? The worst is when they want you to like kind of chase it, chase the dollar. Oh my God. Baby. Pull you, back. Or yeah. put it over their friend's head. Okay. I'm like, what no, do do? girl. I'm like, are you unsure about giving me this dollar? You must need this more than I do. So you can keep Are you me. unsure? <laughs> are you I mean, what you, what, what you doing, girl? Yeah. Right, I right. Be bothered with that. that is so funny. I sometimes <laughs> feel like I'm the only person who experiences certain things. No, absolutely not. You know, I it's just I I feel like also when we talk about the documentary uh -huh, uh -huh. and we talk about my times performing in uh in the South, I feel like the time when we were raised, there was terms that we would throw around. Right. Obviously that we don't throw around anymore. But you you know, people would say like, oh, that's a tranny performer. Right. Mm -hmm. Or they would say that person's a titty queen. Right. Or that person's transy. Uh -huh. Or, tra you know, all those terms. But we grew up emulating these people that we held as superheroes. Right. Yeah. Like these were the, and still are, right. the epitome of glamour. You know, I know this has to be true for you. It was a mark of distinction when you started performing and people would go, oh, I thought you were trans. Yeah. Because you would be like, fuck. Yeah. Wow, I'm, I'm I, sucking, my honey. goal is to be a female <laughs> right. impersonator. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I, I have you know had work done. You have? Oh, uh, just a little bit. No, can you not tell? <laughs> well, and that's what we talked about, like yeah. the, the, the editing of pictures or right. whatever. It's just the next step in application. You want to, you want to look a certain way. Yes, and it's like you know, and girl, when I tell you that the fans with with the girls that get the work done, they're like, mm -hmm. oh, you're doing too much, which drives me insane i'm like why do you fucking care what i'm doing to my body What's like it's just much? it's so bizarre but i did it to because it does make my drag better mm -hmm. you know i i had you know my, my butt done because you know it now i can get somewhat naked i can show body you know i love being a boy i love the the transformation part of it i have no mm -hmm. desire to start hormones or doing any of that but i did this because this is my career this is what i've been doing for 23 years so mm -hmm. you know I think that I, I wanted to do that to elevate my drag and take it up to another level. And it's my body, so why not? I mean, and I feel like <laughs> these conversations are so important because, um, you know, the, these people that are saying like, oh, this is too much or that's right. not enough right. or, or going back and forth with that don't realize that that conversation is just these people down here having that conversation right. because I'm around some of the most beautiful uh, drag entertainers, trans people, uh, drag kings right. all, all over the place. We all are. And none of those people that I consider to be absolutely beautiful or I say, oh, you have a darling figure or this right. or that, ever think anything of me less than as beautiful as. Right. They would never come to me and be like, you need to do this to improve. Right. They're like, if you like it like that, maybe I like it like right. that. But if you want more, then I'm behind you having more. I've, I've got friends that are pumped to hell and, and you know, fillers and all that. And if that's what you like, baby, go ahead. It, right. it's, it's not it's not hurting me. It's not interfering with my life. If that's what you need to do to make yourself happy or feel more comfortable, go at it. Right. But it, it's so bizarre when people come to your photos and they're like, girl, what have you done to your face? Mm -hmm. Girl, what have you done? I'm like. Everything I needed to. Every, baby, it's right. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, it's so bizarre. Right. I just, I can't imagine some of the things that people say to myself or that I've seen them say to other queens. I'm like. The fucking audacity, you know, it's so and it's bizarre. always somebody with a profile that says like all hate will be blocked. Okay, and, um, I'm living my life, live yours, and it's I'm like, like, girl, why are you so upset? Yeah, it's also the ugliest people have the most to say. I'm like, shut the fuck up. That's <laughs> absolutely true. It's always those people. I'm like, girl, you fucking troll. 
Let's take a break. (laughs) We are back, kicking with Phoenix about a little bit of everything. This is the part of the show called Read Me Delta. Read Me Delta! I, I think people are really nice with their letters. I do feel bad for some people because... I start answering the letter and then I'm like, never mind. Right. I want to talk about something else. <laughs> I love your little letter opener. Isn't that so pretty? professional? Thanks. Okay. First letter Dear Delta and guest, I recently had a dream where I walked into a Dunkin' Donuts and found, found Delta working behind the counter. <laughs> she was so excited to share with me a new coffee creation she had just made a red hot cinnamon latte. Okay. I tried it and it was surprisingly delicious. Our hot cinnamon candies very Delta. If you could create a new coffee drink, what would it be? Thank you for being in my dream. Adoringly, very Christopher. Uh, I like cinnamon. I like cinnamon candy also, a yeah. lot. Uh-huh. I like cinnamon gum. Uh-huh. Me too. I am. Um, I love to get like, um, is it icebreakers that have like the square gum? Yes. Uh huh. And then also something else like a like a mint that is cinnamon, and then a gum that's cinnamon. Okay. Or if I peppermint, the same thing. I right. like it to match up. Right. And I want to overload it, especially if I'm going to like a meet and greet or something, mm-hmm. because you want people to hear you. Right. And they'll be like, ooh, girl, ooh, girl. you've been on that patio. Oh, girl. That girl, where you been? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've always got like Altoids and stuff with me because I'm, I'm big on, you know, it's, there's nothing worse than walking up to, especially to like a queen. You know, I like to smell good. I like for my breath to smell good because uh-huh. I, we, we all know those girls that, that breath would be right. a little funky. You know what I mean? Well, and especially like, if a girl's oh, girl. cocktailing right, or right. whatever. Like, you're aware. Right. Like, you're aware. Oh, yeah. We're, we've, we've been in a community where we're around people smoking, smoking weed, right. uh, 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 snorting coke, and you can see the fucking <laughs> nose. It's like, girl, pull that shit up. Triggered. That shit up. <laughs> Why are you letting all that hang out? You're wasting, girl. Right, right. <laughs> um, you know, but again, just any of those things, even just, just – being in a stale room. Right, yeah. You know? But as far as cinnamon, uh, do you drink coffee? Or I do, you, yeah. You do? Uh-huh. Would you drink a Red Hot cinnamon coffee? That might be a little it's much a little for much. me. Candy in it. So yeah, that, that, a, a Red Hot coffee, yeah, no. What's your coffee order? Hot, hot or cold? So I, I like hot. Okay. Um, and, and people are like, you know, the whole like uh, stereotype, the gays with the iced coffee. I'm, I'm a hot coffee kind of person. Okay. Um, normally like a, a French vanilla latte, okay. something like that, um, yeah. with oat milk. Now, what if there's only almond milk? Fuck it. You no. have a nut allergy. I have a nut allergy. <laughs> um, no, normally I, I like the oat milk, but I mean, I'll even do regular. It's uh-huh. fine, but I, uh-huh. I do prefer oat milk. If you go to a donut shop, what's your donut choice? Oh, I love a like lemon filled. Oh, yeah, okay. like a lemon filled, a, a raspberry filled. I like to be filled. No, you do cream Ooh, filled, bitch. Oh, cream filled, honey. <laughs> Nasty. I feel like most people always seem to go for like what you would call a fancy donut, like uh-huh. an apple fritter or something like that. That's not no, you. No, that's not me. That's not my vibe. I like that about yeah, you. Yeah. I like Wait, a, when's your birthday? December twelfth. Sagittarius. Oh, yeah. That means something. Yeah, and I'm I'm a fire sign. I'm a ginger natural, so maybe the fire is flowing. You do have beautiful your your natural hair color thank is you. stunning. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's like I feel like people always um always shoot for like the perfect red or the perfect blonde. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people that want the perfect blonde, it's usually like an ash, right. something like that. But the red, I think it's universally people love an orangey, orangey. I, I was about to say, I've been wearing, you know, blonde and red are my colors that I wear in drag. But I'm loving that kind of orangey red, mm. like copper penny color red. I love it. It's my favorite, yeah, too. Yeah, it's so pretty, yeah. And sometimes it's hard to find good wigs like that. yeah. Because you remember back in the day before, um, before there were like super good quality l- right. uh, lace wigs, we were starting to get a lot of um, like beauty shop uh-huh. wigs uh-huh. that had decent enough right. lace. We weren't yep. that concerned about the lace, right? But um, you would always get that one, one B, two, yep. maybe a six thirteen, and they'd only get like two in two stock. Of them. Yep. But I would go buy both of them. <laughs> I need those companies to start coming out with more like reds. Yes, that like, vibrant kind of red. How are you with? Do you prefer a lace front or do you like to make your own wig lines um the, the, it depends i if i'm wearing something that's sort of flat ish uh-huh. i do like a lace front but if i'm doing something big right i kind of still like that old school i do like, too the little spongy yes and i mean like the the, the back combing of it yeah because i do see some lace fronts that i'm like 
just because it's a lace front right. doesn't mean you can just plop that right. thing on your head because it just you know some of them still need to be shadowed and and groomed a little bit you know pluck the hairs out you know because right. some of them is just like a right. like that that arch girl no right. And, you know, I don't think, again, we're going back to asking people and, right. and shadowing people who um, who who do know that. Right. You know, all mm -hmm. these years later of doing drag, you know, when I sat down with Bianca, uh, who I before ha Bianca being here, I had only worked with her a few times. Uh -huh. And I just straight up asked her. I was like, how do you do that? Right. And she was very honest with her information. She's like, her I take this step. She's amazing. Like, she's like, baby, it's so simple. It's just if you don't know. Right. But you can ask me. And Absolutely. Then, and I was like, oh, you're so, I did say, I was like, you're so generous with your information. She's like, not with everybody. <laughs> I was like, thank you. I love hearing I that. Always, she, she is uh, the bitchiness on stage. Right. Is, is is amazing, but then offstage, just so sweet. So sweet, so yep. generous, yep. and really does have so much more knowledge than a lot of people Absolutely. even know because Absolutely. she's been so many people and had so many kinds of jobs. The stuff that comes out of that girl's mouth makes me want to crawl I under know. the table. And, <laughs> I'm like, oh and we'll God. be deadpan with it. <laughs> Absolutely. Deadpan with it. I live. I do too. I live. Okay, this looks like a short letter. Okay. Dear Delta and Very Phoenix, what are your thoughts about buying frozen vegetables? Are you a fresh produce, organic veggie girl, or more like a freezer food devotee girl? Eco-friendly regards veggie raptor. Do you, okay. like, do you like vegetables? I do like vegetables. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on what I'm cooking. I, I love to cook. So it depends on what I'm cooking. Normally, I'll do fresh vegetables. I love like a zucchini or squash and then... Um, but if I'm doing like a soup or something like that, I'll buy frozen vegetables. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, normally I don't really do frozen vegetables if I'm just kind of eating that alone. As like a side yeah, right, or, yeah, 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 yeah. it's fresh. I'm with you on that. Do you have a, like a preferred soup? Are you a soup person? I love a like um, tomato basil. Mm -hmm. a chunky tomato basil is so good. A like vegetable beef soup, especially when it's like cold, a clam chowder. I love something like that. So, yeah. Especially when it's cold out. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I um I recently made a casserole and I thought I would skip the fresh broccoli step uh -huh. and just use packaged broccoli and uh, no baby <laughs> it's first of all I made the casserole and I was like I actually don't want to eat this tonight. right right so I put the the foil over the dish and I put it in the refrigerator and something activated in there and you know the <laughs> broccoli is really fresh yeah but she smells yeah was it like Farts. Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. made that whole refrigerator and that whole kitchen stink. It's a no for me. Mm -mm. It was not. But the food itself was good. Right. But when I, like, because I cooked it the next day, but. Do you I do was, Brussels sprouts? I love Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I do. In any way. And yeah, it's shaved. Me too. If you want to gussy them up with bacon, if you don't, yeah. I'm fine with that. Me too. I can't do peas. Okay. I have a really, I can, I can do pea soup. Uh huh. But I can't do peas. Why? What, what is it? The texture? It's the texture. Okay. okay. And this is interesting. I've probably said this before, but I think it bears repeating. I also don't like um, cherry tomatoes or um, or uh, grape tomatoes. Okay. Why? Because peas and those two things, I don't like the way they feel when they bust in my mouth. Which isn't that strange. <laughs> Because those are the only three things that I don't like busting in my mouth. Right. Right. So why are you so picky, bitch? <laughs> I love a cherry tomato. I can just eat them. Ooh, they just, just taste earthen or something. Really? I, I love them. I can just, just eat them plain. Will you eat a um, a tomato sandwich? Oh, absolutely. Will you eat Maybe. fried green tomatoes? Absolutely. Yeah. I am you southern. Ketchup? Yeah. I love that. Do you eat at like barbecue places? Oh, yeah. Can you do brisket burnt ends? brisket burning like oh like the char oh yeah uh -huh. yeah i can do all that mm -hmm. yeah there's a place um i don't know why i'm playing with her because like i said i went to her home <laughs> and we had all these side dishes because my favorite I, I could eat no meat and just have side dishes okay. uh -huh. or i can eat the meat whatever right. but it was so, so good. good yeah Ooh, i, I don't God. ever I, I i can't eat all that all the time mm -hmm. but every now it's and heavy. then it's yeah every now and then because it's also it just reminds me of like my childhood mm -hmm. so you know every now and then i'll kind of indulge and, and do something like that i was supposed to live there yeah i was supposed yeah. to be yeah. you yeah but here i am here you are thank you for being here oh my god Delta. this is so here fun, is so fun. I, I knew i was so excited just to come and kind of catch up it's been forever since we've seen each other um so it was, i was excited just to come and catch up with i'm you. so glad yeah. i know your show tonight's gonna be amazing yes yes um, yes I, I should show up and go like this you should maybe, oh, maybe okay. chase that dollar girl right <laughs> come get it throw come that three dollars at me 
Make it sprinkle. Make it sprinkle. Make me tinkle. <laughs> Thank you all so much for listening to and watching Very Delta. Our show comes out every Monday. Subscribe to Mom Podcast on the YouTube channel and turn on your notifications so you never miss an episode. Search for Very Delta on your favorite podcast apps and listen to the audio only version if you can't handle all this beauty. <laughs> because honestly, you will I go into mean. a coma. I mean, hello. I love when you said earlier you were like, baby, because it's right. Because it's right, girl. Girl, what are you talking what about? Are you talking about? What exactly. are you talking about? <laughs> You can also sign up for our premiere offerings on Mom Plus Gold by visiting mompodcast.plus where you get weekly episodes of more Very Delta. And don't forget to send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. Where can people follow you? Uh, you can find me on Instagram. I'm I'm more active on Instagram than anything. Uh, so Phoenix underscore ATL. That's kind of what it is mm -hmm. on all of them. Twitter. They know where the hell you are. Yes. Stop playing. Find me, Stop baby. Stop playing in her face. Find me. We love you so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And until next week, keep things very Delta. To listen to Very Delta ad-free, a day early, and to get access to more Very Delta, sign up for Mom Plus Gold at mompodcast.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work. Production supervision and engineering by Margot Padilla. Editing and post-production by Doug Robertson, with original theme music by Will Pitts. Executive produced by Willem, Alaska, Big Dipper, Camille Stennis, and Joe Cilio. There's no fish here to fry, really. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm not really frying fish. I'm not really, I'm trying to figure out how to catch the fucking fish. You know what I'm saying? Mom! Mom!